Hello, everybody. It's very nice to, uh, to, uh, to be here at KitCon. My name is Sandro Andrade. I have a slide to present myself. I work as a professor at Federal Institute of Technology in, in Brazil. I've been uh, using Qt and KDE technologies for some uh, years uh, or, uh, already. I'm contributing to KDE since 2008. I started doing some game development at Gluon, and then I did some uh, work on KDevelop and Plasmate, and lately I've been uh, working mostly by doing some community management in Latin America, and in last month doing some KDE uh, stuff, what is uh, what that talk is about. And also, I'm a member of the board of di uh, directors of KDE uh, EV since uh, last uh, year. And of course, I'm com completely mad uh, about music, and that talk is about that. And this talk is to about two really amazing things, which are free software and music, or cute and music, or KDE and music. You pick up your favorite combination. And And free, uh, free software and music are really close friends, and close friends uh, usually do many things together. So uh, we have many pretty cool free software solutions for music stuff uh, out there. Uh, we have uh, a lot of software for and shit music pu pu publishing and uh, music, uh, music post-production and uh, sound synthesis and uh, MIDI s s uh, sequency. So we have a lot of, uh, of pretty good free software for doing music. People uh, are doing music in their house nowadays uh, with a computer and some mi uh, MIDI sequencing and doing really good, good uh, stuff. But uh, also, as every uh, every nice friends, there are many things they, they aren't very good at doing together. So while someone may prefer to go to the beach, his friend may want to smell flowers in some place in the countryside. So free software and, uh, and music, and most specifically, free software for music education is still a topic with, uh, with Uh, where we lack. So there are no many free software solutions for music educations nowadays. Uh, we have some of them, like GNU Solfege, uh, which is pretty complete, but uh, I think uh, we can have something doing more, more nice uh, work for, for music education. So actually, I started doing something in, uh, at that uh, way in 2010. 10, when one of my students started, started develop uh, Ispine. Apparently, I have some uh, word, uh, word preference for uh, word uh, ending in at, but this is only a consequence. So, uh, at that time, uh, we were doing really crap software for music education. Uh, it uh, was based on Qt4 and KDE Libs4, but uh, it uh, was completely uh, over uh, engineering, and the students got graduated. I, I was qu uh, quite busy doing my PhD, and uh, we didn't manage to push that forward. And only five uh, years later, last uh, year, then I decided to start develop uh, developing Minoe as my personal project, uh, of course, uh, working uh, also uh, with students or Uh, anyone uh, else who wants to contribute. And uh, I was pretty happy in see uh, this project getting a first release uh, after uh, only six months uh, of uh, work. So, uh, of course, it hasn't many, many features because there was uh, only six months of uh, work, but uh, it, uh, it uh, works. Basically, um, Focusing uh, on uh, ear, uh, ear training uh, exercise. So, the goal uh, of the so uh, the software right now is to provide you a set uh, of exercises to training your uh, ear. Uh, uh, so uh, you should uh, listen to some musical concepts, uh, concepts, and uh, you should uh, user uh, are expected to recognize uh, uh, what uh, is being played by the software. Right. 
So, uh, but uh, what uh, is Minoe uh, after all? Uh, it's a free software for supporting teachers and students in play their uh, roles for uh, all sort, uh, sort of music-related educational content. Uh, I like to think about uh, it that uh, in that uh, a broader sense because uh, we can virtually have anything related to music education uh, on it. Um, uh, of course, uh, we don't intend to address the uh, the other uh, aspects for music that uh, are currently quite uh, well covered by the existing solutions for music production and so on. Uh, it's developed by the KD com uh, com com uh, community. The website is minoe.kd.org. And since uh, its inception, we wanted it to be extens uh, extensible to new content. So um, uh, user uh, are currently uh, able to introduce, uh, to introduce new exercises by uh, only adding new JSON files. Uh, all the, uh, uh, the exercises are specified in JSON files, so uh, you can create new exercises uh, with no new lines uh, of source code. Uh, we wanted it to be available on multiple platforms and for multiple form factors. And we want it to be a hub to leverage the use of open data for music education. And we want it to be driven by real, uh, real uh, users' needs. So uh, we have a kind of a partner, uh, partnership with the music school at Fed, uh, Federal uh, University of Bahia, where uh, I live, when some friends uh, are helping us by doing some specialized music education help. Okay. So currently, uh, we have uh, ear training exercises in four ca uh, categories. We have uh, exercises for recognizing shorts, uh, intervals, rhythms, and uh, scales. But new exercises may be uh, easily defined by, uh, by creating new JSON files and some features for volume, pitch, uh, pitch and tempo control. So that uh, isn't uh, too much right, uh, right, uh, right now but uh, we uh, are sure that it's uh, working. So better than say talking, we can have some brief demonstration now. So uh, it should, uh, uh, Minoe should be uh, already uh, available in most uh, user distributions. So just install it. Uh, it's part uh, of KDE uh, uh, Edu. So if you install KDE, I do, we should uh, already have Minoe installed on uh, your computer. So we have a basic um, navigation menu. That menu is completely built dynamically from the JSON files that uh, are currently installed on uh, your machine. So if you add a, a new JSON file, you should expect to uh, automatically appear some new cat uh, cat uh, catego category or new exercise, uh, uh, exercise. So for charts, we have a bunch of categories for recognizing uh, a lot of different kinds of charts. So we can start start uh, with a pretty very simple exercise, where it should be uh, able to to recognize uh, to recognize the difference between a minor and a major short. So you can click on a new exercise. So that's quite hard because it's in a very low range of the piano. So you can uh, ask to to play uh, again. It's quite. Difficult. Do we have uh, uh, any musicians on the audience right now? Okay, uh, one. Okay, sound more major. Let's see if you are good. Okay, no, it's a minor chart, but yeah. Yeah, so let's try again. Okay, new question. Hopefully, it will be up here in an easier range, right? Okay, that's pretty cool. That's a major short, right? Okay. Okay, and uh, it shows the right uh, answer there by small circles on the piano keyboard. So you can keep trying and or click on give up. If you m move your mouse uh, over the possible uh, answers, you see the 
representation of that uh, answer on the keyboard, right? And you can just give up to see uh, what uh, uh, what is the right answer. Yes, uh, Ovidio. Uh, no, uh, just the first note uh, of the chart is uh, white because that's the tonic note, and the other cir uh, uh, circles are painted uh, with the same color of the the answer. Okay, we can try something. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, that can be. Uh, can become quite complicated if you have a lot of charts to difference between them. So that's quite hard. That's a pretty difficult chord. I will, I, I won't try. I will just give up. And this is a very very tense chord, right? So uh, we have similar. We have similar exercise for detecting uh, inter, uh, intervals. Just, uh, uh, detecting thirds is a quite uh, easy exercise as well. So this is a minor third. Okay, I'm very good uh, on it. So that's why uh, I'm showing you that one. So, but it can uh, also becomes really really difficult if you have a lot of options. This is uh, also simple, right? This is a major third. Yeah, I have no uh, idea. So, and we have uh, also um, some rhythm reco uh, recognition ex exercise where the tool uh, will play you four sequence of randomly chosen rhythm pat uh, patterns, and uh, you should be uh, able to recognize uh, which sequence of the rhythm patterns uh, was played. So, let us. Hope. Uh, again. Dun, dun, dun. I think it's that one. Uh, yes. But if uh, if you select some uh, wrong uh, answer, for example, and it shows you uh, which uh, answers were wrong and uh, which uh, answers you selected right. So. Basically, that's uh, what uh, we have so far. So let's go back to the presentation. Uh, this is the uh, architecture for the first version we released on uh, April this uh, year. It's a quite simple uh, architecture because that uh, was what we need at that time. So we have a, a very simple core where an exercise controller reads the JSON files uh, which specify the exercise, do a merge between uh, all uh, uh, all of those files and uh, make them uh, available for for creating the navigation menu. We have a MIDI sequ uh, sequencer at that time with a very high couple implementation to the drumstick library and uh, also timidity and free pads. So that uh, was a quite limiting factor at this first architecture, and then a bunch a bench of QML code uh, which dynamically builds the, the navigation menu and uh, also the available uh, answers for a given uh, exercise. And in the second release, uh, we did um, uh, one month ago, uh, we made some improvements on that uh, architecture uh, on that uh, architecture and. Exactly to set the stage for having Minue running on different platforms. So now we have a plugin based uh, architecture where all the features uh, related to sound uh, have been moving for a given plugin. So uh, you, can, uh, you can create a given, uh, a new plugin for having Minue running on a new platform. So on, uh, on desktop, currently uh, we use FluidSynth as a plugin. Which is more uh, easily to use than drum uh, than drumstick, and also we did uh, a lot of refactoring on Q, uh, QML code. We moved to use Qt, uh, Qt Quick Controls too, exactly to to make the code, uh, the code convergence for mobile uh, easier. And so that is the current uh, architecture for the second release. 
Okay, uh, three months uh, ago uh, we got a GSOC student uh, accepted to work on Minue. He's uh, Ayush Shah from uh, India who did a very pretty nice uh, work when creating uh, uh, an Android version for Minue which contains uh, all those same versions you find on the desktop version, right? So uh, it's available on Google, uh, Google Play Store. We published it uh, it's, uh, two weeks ago. So it's, uh, it have uh, already two, 250 downloads, which is not bad, uh, I think. Okay. So uh, I, I, uh, for the, uh, in the Android solution, we are uh, using Qt Quick Controls 2 for the UI, and we use C Sound for implementing the back end in uh, Android. Right. Uh, also uh, using Fluid Synth to send MIDI uh, events for handling MIDI uh, events in uh, Android and the GM Bank so uh, sound font to actually produce the sounds. And the build system is provided by extra CMake modules, uh, which uh, where you have everything to build and deploy uh, Android uh, applications uh, already uh, available, which is pretty cool. So uh, I have it running on my phone, but I prepare a uh, a video by demonstrating the Android uh, version. You can install it on uh, your phone. Basically, uh, we have uh, this is the initial uh, initial screen. We have a, a very uh, usual navigation drawer where you can um, uh, run uh, across the categories. Uh, we uh, also develop an an uh, initial that uh, dashboard. Uh, which presents the, uh, the major exercise categories, uh, which uh, allow you to jump directly to a given exercise category. And uh, it uh, uses the, uh, the same JSON files for defining the exercise. So uh, we have some some challenges uh, when designing this user interface for small uh, small screens. So basically, for the virtual piano, we implemented some some uh, horizontal scrolling feature to just jump to the right session of the piano uh, where the exercise is playing something. Okay, and at that uh, at that uh, that block uh, available uh, answers, we have uh, also a vertical scroll to enable uh, us to present exercise uh, with a large number of uh, available uh, available uh, answers. Uh, also exercise for rhythm recognition. If you select some uh, wrong pattern, uh, it show then as that red rectangles when you can tap uh, on it and see uh, which uh, is the right uh, answer for that exercise, right? Okay, that is a, a harder written re uh, re recognition exercise. It's uh, also available at the desktop version, right? Okay, that's it. So thanks to uh, Ayush Shah for doing that thing. And okay, so basically, what's next? So now we are sure that you, uh, we can have it running on the desktop, we can have it running on Linux. The new uh, architecture will hopefully make it uh, easier to have uh, it running on Windows or uh, iOS or uh, other platform. And now uh, we need to, to invest some time to finish the code conversions. A lot of components uh, are actually reused between th those two versions, but still uh, we still have some uh, working to do to have a, a really unique code base with a really uh, unique build system. Uh, we are uh, uh, working on it now. We want to rethink the user experience because just after you go through an experience of develop some kind of application, you get a firm grasp of how user interface should work on mobile platforms. So you should rethink how we want to implement those workflows. We still need to improve the UI for tablets. We are got some 
feedback for something to improve for ta uh, for tablets. We still need to implement sheet music support for having those exercises uh, also represented by uh, using the regular notation for for music. We want to to extend in to extend it to support uh, other music content because right now we have a, a only a ear training exercise, but uh, we plan to add something related to music theory or to improvisation or to harmony or uh, other aspects of music education. And also a, ni a nice feature is to, uh, to have it uh, able to to uh, to recognize uh, answers by allowing the user to sing the uh, interval, for example, or to answer uh, rhythm exercise by clapping uh, your hand and, and having the microphone detecting uh, if uh, you are clapping in the right way or in the wrong way. So, uh, a lot of uh, work to do. And I can't finish this presentation without doing a very thank you for uh, to the KD community to to provide all the support to have this happen in only six months. So uh, I'm really happy to, uh, to see uh, all, uh, all the things that, uh, that KD can provide you being uh, using, uh, use it at uh, this uh, work. So we managed to come up uh, with a website and the uh, source code uh, repository tasks and code uh, over, uh, overview continuous integration. So uh, it's more, more, more uh, easier to put something uh, out uh, with, uh, we have a very uh, amazing community providing you everything uh, you need to make it happen. So. Okay, join us. Uh, we are currently a, a very small team. It's just myself and uh, Ayushisha and another developer. One design doing the icons and those things, and two more guys with uh, who help uh, with some music content. So we need more people uh, working on it. And so you can help, uh, of course, by coding, but uh, also bring some music feedback uh, on it, or by doing some uh, artwork, translating, or just dealing uh, with people. This is nice uh, as well. So we can talk to us at the KDE Edu mailing, li uh, mailing list or the KDE Edu uh, uh, IRC channel in Freenode. And that's it. Thanks for your attention. <laughs> so, anybody has, have any question? Okay, Mario. Uh, yes, yes, uh, of course. Uh, uh, although creating JSON file is quite uh, easier, it's more uh, easier than doing things in code. But uh, of course, having a visual editor to to produce the JSON files if is a really really nice feature. Yeah. Any other question? Yeah. And um, not yet, but. Yes, maybe you can just get uh, all the categories and selecting some random thing. But uh, I guess for teachers and students, they uh, usually have a, a very specific flow of how to apply exercise to stu students by starting uh, with an, a, a very uh, easy level of uh, your training exercise and then improving to to more harder exercise, so. Yeah, yeah, that can be done, sure, sure. Yes. So uh, we have a four-month release cycle for uh, application in in KDE. So I guess the next schedule uh, isn't uh, isn't uh, available uh, yet. But you can join us at uh, any time. We can do uh, what we can have it done for the next release. Yeah, sure. Yes. 
against you? Uh, yes, that's in our plan uh, as well. Um, actually, that's the part when it goes more so, uh, so, social or leveraging the use of uh, open data. And it would be really uh, awesome uh, with something in, in Cuba, make some, uh, some, uh, some exercise uh, regarding some Latin music and made it uh, available on the KD uh, store and then uh, any uh, user using Minway could download and start doing some uh, something. Yeah, it's a, it's a really cool feature. Yeah. More questions? Yeah, I can show. Okay, this is an, a JSON file for the the first version of Minoe. Uh, we've done some improvements uh, on it, but uh, it's basically a hierarchical J, uh, JSON where you define the categories. For example, this is for the, cate uh, the category of uh, in uh, intervals. Here you define the range where the randomly choose root node is pick up by the software. So here uh, I'm defined from 21 to 104, uh, which is the Rolly piano range. So uh, you can prevent uh, it for creating exercise on the very low range uh, of the piano by increasing that first number, 21. And then you here define an, a, given, uh, a given exercise. So this is this. Uh, so this is the exercise I've just shown you, that one that recognizes thirds. So you have two possible answers for this exercise. It can be a minor third or a major third. And here you just put a sequence of nodes which rep uh, rep uh, represents how far are each node from the root position. So if you see, a, if you have a piano, keyboard like that one. If this is the root node, which is randomly chosen, if you count one, two, three, you have a minor third, right? So that is that number here, representing a minor third. And if you count four, that is a major third. So for scales, you do something similar. For a major scale, that's the sequence of distances from the root node to form a major scale. So it isn't that hard to, to create uh, your, uh, uh, your own. Okay. okay, thank you very much.